Welcome to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast, where we discuss various dog training topics to help you become the best leader for your dog. Marvin Pierce has over 20 years of experience with obedience training for dogs located in the Sherwood, Oregon area. Offering private lessons and group clinics, the dog teacher has been able to change the lives of dog owners by helping them develop and maintain an obedient dog. For more information, contact us at MarvinPierceDogTeacher.com. And then the other day he got pissed. I don't know why. I guess his blanket was dirty, but he put it in the water bucket. So I had to get the whole out. thing. Yeah, the whole whole <laughs> blanket was in the water bucket. Not part of it, the whole. He wanted a new one. He did, mm-hmm. and he got one and fresh water. <laughs> so, fresh water. <laughs> yeah. so it's pretty fun to see the see how cool the dog is turning. Must out have been pissed be. at the room service here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dirty bedding, <laughs> dirty cups. My you know. lucky to send her to the office. <laughs> but it is fun to see the dogs like him change. And you know, for me, different dogs is different. I mean, just you were talking here recently about you didn't feel we were far enough along with some dogs. Uh-huh. And I feel that way, like with Blue. He's my main one right now. He, and, I, and it was uh, Burger or whatever his name is. Berger. Berger. Yeah, Berger. Mm-hmm. It was him like four days ago. I was so aggravated that dog. It's like, you know, we're just not getting very far. I mean, I could get him to walk right by my leg on a leash, on a loose leash and behave, but he wouldn't come to me. And now I've got him on the playground coming to me. So, but it's just like that. It changes. And I always remember, and it, for everybody, especially you that trains dogs all the time, it, one day it just snaps and they got it, I but they so didn't agree. get it yeah. that day. They got all the building yes. up that you did. Yes, and that's what gets them yeah. here. And that's for yeah. me. Like with Blue, I've been aggravated with that dog now. And I told you because I thought he was going to go over that ten foot wall the other day. Yeah, <clears throat> and he made it about halfway up it, and then he, luckily he came back into the round pen instead of trying to go on over the wall. But now I got a recall on him pretty good. And pretty good, not great, because the day you see not there in the lane, yeah. I think he sold up on me. But I just went and got him. I'm not yeah. going to argue with him because of the fact that Bianco was there. And a yeah, it was hard for him. He just saw a whole pack yeah, of dogs and come in. Yeah, there's dogs, to... nine dogs actually yeah. on the other side of it. And he wanted to go be yeah. with them because he don't get to be with dogs because he's scared. So I just went and put a leash on him let him on out. And I think the people really appreciate that, too. Yeah. Because I didn't aggravate the dog. Yeah. I just went and got him and put yeah. him up. And, but I played fetch with him today with a stick and round pen and... He acts like maybe somebody's arguing with him with a stick where he don't want to give it to you, you know, and he'll re-grab, and I don't like that. So me and him worked on that and, and taught him to start leaving the stick while we walked away, and that's hard for dogs to do a lot of times, especially dogs that come here. They either play fetch and don't quit, or they won't play fetch. So for me, it's always fun whenever we can get that out of their head that they didn't get a job and buy the stuff humans did and then we let them play with our stuff and once i think you change it to that way it makes a lot of difference so hey brett we got any questions yeah you got a couple comments on here too a bunch of people said hi first though hi Ico said we have marvin and bianca to thank for this amazing day we're so happy uh pock potch potch yeah uh, Potch and us uh, are learning from this team. Yeah, that's who we were just talking about. Yeah. Yep. And it was fun. Yep, and then you got Mary. She said hello. You got Candy said good evening. Brian said Cody Bailey and Clay say hi, Papa. <laughs> hey, kids. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, Reach <laughs> hey, Cody, you need to have your grandpa get his uh, podcast going and you can listen to our podcast. We have like, what, five of them now? Six. Yeah. Six? Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty fun because Cody's the one that's listening to my audio book like a zillion times. And she's read my book. I mean, she knows every word in the book, every story. And now she's wanting to go to the places that are in it. And I took her to a couple of them here a while back, but some of them are in like Montana and stuff, so I'll we'll take a road trip. <laughs> <clears throat> so, any more? Th- no questions, though. So, Jocelyn, you remember our conversation today. I'm like, you and Mariah need to have some kind of topics you'd like to talk about. Because you're the one that gets to do all the office work, the phones. And I know I, that would drive me. I couldn't do that job. <laughs> I'd be like, just bring the damn dog in. <laughs> That's what Jocelyn says. What are you yeah. talking about? You know? it's like, Isn't that what we That's on our yeah. show. Yeah. Just remember, just remember. <laughs> That's why the kennels get so overloaded, you know? Exactly. Um, I think Mariah had a list, 
in the kennels and it got left in the kennels. Oh, that's not very helpful. Text Mariah, <laughs> hey, what's on your what's list? What's our list? She's <laughs> no, she's already home asleep. <laughs> oh, I did think of something. What? Um, if you already have a dog and you're bringing a new dog home, what would be the best way to introduce them before just putting them in the house together? <clears throat> you know, for me, there's a lot of different things, but I'm going to change your question a little bit because I see it happen time and time again and I have people message me and tell me my dog's being so bad I'm going to get a puppy so we'll have somebody to play with and it's terrible mm -hmm. if you got one turd and you buy a puppy you're going to have two turds one of them just going to be younger than the other one and it's just never stops. even if you have one okay-ish dog you're going to have two turds you are and it's just hard it's yeah. hard for people to understand that but you know, me more and more, I try stuff new all the time at the kennels, you know. And when I read and I watch videos and I read books, and you have one of my Caesar books you was going to bring me about a month ago because I've read the other one already. It's like four days ago. Yeah, <laughs> four days. Same, same difference. <clears throat> but for me, I still try to read and I watch. And that's one of the things I was telling you the other day when you got aggravated at me and wanted to throw something at me. I didn't. I know. You didn't have nothing. <laughs> but... I told you it's always, you know, and it, I think one of the huge mistakes that people make, like me right now, mm -hmm. I'm trying to make a river table. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, I'm just like pissed and I ain't even started. <laughs> it's like, I know I'm going to screw up. And it's like, how much money do I want to spend to learn? And I paid a guy one time. I went and took a class, a one-day class, me and Anthony, $1,000. And we drove to Grants Pass, stayed at a hotel. And went to a class. And I didn't pay much mind to the class because I bullshitted mostly with a guy and about wood and different types of wood and where you find wood. And Anthony was the one doing it, and he was learning it, and he got himself killed in a motorcycle wreck. So I still don't. I just know enough about epoxy to be dangerous. I mean, like these cracks in this table I made, us. I filled all these cracks with epoxy. I dyed the epoxy. I mean, there's some shortcuts I took to make it better, quicker. But... Any time that I do something now with epoxy, I'm going to start trying to make sure I see exactly what I've done, what my mixtures were, so I could duplicate it. If I make a mistake, I can see what the mistake was, and then I can try to figure out how to fix the mistake. Where with you with dogs the other day, you I seen you get aggravated from like, I don't even know how far away it was. I've seen it instantly. As soon as you got aggravated, you lost it. Mm -hmm. And I, I try not to, which I still... I think I deal with the aggravation different than you because mm -hmm. you can't see it because I don't show it. Mm -hmm. And even in a lesson, somebody will do something, I'll be like, hey, and they're like, you weren't even looking at me. It's like, I don't have to be looking at you. I see what you did, mm -hmm. you know. And <clears throat> with you, <clears throat> with uh, the Rottweiler, mm -hmm. Tonka, you quit having fun because mm -hmm. you got aggravated. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I don't know. I tell people all the time, how much more fun can it be? We make a living playing with dogs. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty cool. And even you, I mean, you enjoy what you do now. You get to bring your dogs to work and Eric's dog to work. And you get to take them out in the field and out in the woods and different things. And so it is fun. But always with me, whenever people get really aggravated or... They just like bow up and want to be tough and look at their dogs like, I'm going to kick your ass. And the dog's like, no, you're not. You're going to give me a freaking treat to sit down is what you're going to do. <laughs> the dog wins. And <clears throat> for me, that's where Tonka was with you the other day. <clears throat> Tonka was having fun at your expense. Uh -huh. He's like, Marvin, look, she's all pissed off at me. <laughs> I'm going to run some more. And But at the end of it, you won. Yeah. And Tonka was happy. Uh -huh. And you learned something. Uh -huh. And for me, with dog training, whenever I do something like and I've been there, you know, only I didn't have a Marvin to stand there and laugh at me. I had to do it myself. <laughs> I had to laugh at myself and fix myself. But whenever you get to that point where that shouldn't happen to you no more. Mm -hmm. Now, I say that, and then you ask me to go help you with Potch to get a recall on him mm -hmm. because he can't hear you because mm -hmm. he's deaf. <laughs> so for me, that's going to be fun because I've done it before and you've done it yep. with the other little dog. Yep. 
and it worked really smooth for you. Yeah, it went really well. But this one ain't going to go so <laughs> smooth, because this one will eat you. Nope, yeah. And that's the big difference. And I got to the point where we were going to have to get to the step where he was going to eat me, and I was like, hey, Marvin, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> and so now he will come at you smiling. Yes. And then bite you when he gets there. Yes. He'll be like, hey, we're buddies, I give yeah. up, and then he'll yeah. bite you. Yeah. Because he's just, that's his life. Yeah. And so for me, I'm excited. I can't wait. And it's I mean, so hard for him now because he knows he's like, she's trying to pick me up and then the fun's going to be over and I'm just not ready. And you can see his little brain like, uh. And that's the biggest thing about dog catching. Like with uh, uh, Kimber. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I think it was, we was talking, me and Robert, and about her coming to him and just kind of going on by when he called right. her. He's like, oh, should I make her stay? No, don't make her stay. That's the dog's problems normally when we start. Is we catch them, we put their ass in jail. Mm -hmm. Time out, some people call it with dogs, whatever, in the kennels. But to me, it's still the same thing. You caught your dog and you locked them up. Yeah. Yep. So if you let them run by you, I don't care, for a day or two or a week, it doesn't matter to me. The getting them to stop and hook up and stay with you is easy enough. But we want to get that thought out of their head that every time they come they're going to get caught yeah so i think we got way off of your subject <laughs> On, well i want to go back to that i feel like there's no one answer to tell someone this is what you do to reintroduce there is one answer be What's the leader that? Be the leader of your But dog. if you don't know how, you need to get help before you bring another you dog. You do, in. you know, and that's the hardest part always is all yeah. of us is no. I mean. Because you might have a dog that was a behavioral dog that isn't quite out of being the alcoholic that goes back to correct. being naughty. And if you bring another dog home with that and do it like you would two decent dogs that never fought, it would be a lot different. And the hard thing about it. it is for me, and I mean, I just read here the other day where somebody got rid of their dog because they brought a new dog home and their other dog couldn't get along with it. And so instead of fixing the problem, they got rid of the new pup because right. the other dog wouldn't yeah. accept it in the house. Yeah. And, you know, for me, that's like, if, I don't know, if you have children and you adopt a child, when you bring it home, do you let your children at home run it away? Right. You or know? do you fix the children that are at home yeah. that didn't accept the new child? Yeah. And some people would just get rid of the kid. I mean, and dogs are, I mean, people are more likely to keep a dog than a kid most of the time. Yeah. I mean, they think these dogs can't defend themselves or nothing else, you know. And, and people have the, the thought in their head always that if they rehome their dog, it's the end of the world, and it ain't. Going off what Jocelyn said, like, I'm a prime example with Dobie. You know, we're getting another dog here in a couple of weeks because of the situ yeah, because of the situation that occurred. It's an older dog. It's, you know, thirteen years old in comparison to Doby not even being two. So <clears throat> what could be some examples that you could do? For to me, you cannot them? and I stress it hard, 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 hard. You cannot let Doby aggravate the old dog. Right. right. And you can't let the old dog sit around and flip him off. And this part is where you have help. But the right. people who don't know, like so many people that come in, until we bring up a specific example that applies to their dog at home, then their brain is like, oh, that's a bad behavior. And so aggravating an older dog doesn't mean they go over and bite its ear and, you know, rip a hole in its head. It could be walking up to it and licking it 50 times. Yes, and sniffing it all yeah. the time, you yeah. know. I mean, that's you yeah. see people dogs get in trouble. Yeah. And me, I go to the same thing. It's like a guy or a girl, doesn't matter, go to the opposite sex and shake their hand. Yeah. And like me, if I'm the one that wants to shake her hand and I won't quit, you know, when you want to let go and I keep on and on and on and on. Yeah. That's yeah. what dogs do yeah. whenever they go sniff. That's how they find out everything about that dog. They don't ask him questions. They go sniff his butt and they know everything about yeah. it. Yeah. And, but it's no different than if you come and shook my hand and introduced yourself and you wouldn't let go, you know, it's like, Hey, you got to not necessary. Yeah. And it's yeah. the dogs are the same way, but people are like, no, that's all right. That's the way it is. <clears throat> and for me, like Joshua's question was, is when you bring this new dog into your house, I feel a lot of times, and it's my opinion, you know, but you take your dog outside and you mm -hmm. introduce these dogs. Don't bring them in the house mm -hmm. and say, hey, here's your new fluffy buddy. 
You take them outside. Take them for a walk. You know, walk them yeah. on 30 minutes yeah. or an hour. Bring them up here. Yeah. Introduce them, you know, on neutral yeah. ground. Not in your dog's domain. Right. Because yeah. if you just bring another dog into his house, I mean, like now, if you brought Scout into his house or Mario Rocks your bear, he'd probably be cool. Yeah, he's not care at all. Yeah. yeah. You know, but it, I think it would be more likely to be the same if you brought him out off your place and met that dog mm-hmm. and they got to be hanging. They, they can't be romping in the brush buddies probably but still yet they can learn to respect one another right and me working with cattle i learned years ago that my dog can't just go bite cows my Mm -hmm. dog has to get respect from a cow but my dog has to respect the cows and it's the same thing when you bring a new dog in if you take your own dog out and introduce them elsewhere and for you even i mean if you brought that dog up here and left it two or three days if it could handle or if y'all did or whatever And then you bring Dobie up here every day and let them hang together. Mm -hmm. Dobie just has to learn he can't aggravate that old dog. But the old dog got to learn he can't aggravate him either. Right, right. I mean, it's a double-edged sword. And the old dog, if it's cranky, can't be pissy for no reason. Right. Yeah. And if he is pissy for no reason, you got to just keep him separated. Right. Right. I mean, you got an old person and a child. Right, yeah. Right. So you boys got to do what's fair to you and the dogs and everybody involved. But it's hard for people to understand sometimes. Sometimes people want to, like, you know, really get on to Dobie. That's not fair. Right. You be a leader, and he has rules, and he right. follows rules, and then that fixes your problem. He did good when he met him. That's why I took him with me when I went out there, you know, was so that he <laughs> could meet him again under the circumstances. Yeah. That, um, But you could tell that he was like, come on, play with me. Yes. Play with me and, and the old dog, they call him Elmo. He was like, nah, I'm not interested. But then he would get down and pounce and jump and want Dobie to play with him. So they, they had a really good interaction. But, it's but that's keep... where you just get Dobie and be like, I know. Right. Just real nice. Don't be all huffy and puffy about it. And, you know, just be, just be nice and polite and teach Dobie that, hey, that dog don't want to do that. Right. Because yeah. sometimes the old dog will play like it makes me think of Rue, where Rue will, like, get a dog to play with her. But then when they actually go to play, she's like, yeah, never yeah. mind. <laughs> when she's done, she's done. Yeah, you right, know? And that's yeah. the way the old dog's going to be with yeah. the dog. So it, it is a great question because of the fact that, you know, for us, uh, uh, the people that own Tobin, they were going to go get, I don't remember what the hell, kind of big jug-headed dog. I don't and remember either. They couldn't have another dog because Tobin was a turd. And then we got Tobin to be with dogs, and they wanted a another setter. dog. Huh? A setter. A setter? Oh, I yeah. thought it was something else. But anyway, whatever it was, they just happened to be here and we had Bo. Yeah. And they ended up taking him to that lab because they already were buddies, you know. Mm. And so it worked out really good for him. So it's fun to see that. And for me, it is hard for people to to bring another dog in because you have a dog and you want a dog, another dog, so your dog has a buddy. I don't think they always need a buddy. You can go to places, you know, and, mm-hmm. and I told people that yesterday and today. I said, like, you know, find you somebody that has a dog and see if y'all's dogs are matched to play together mm-hmm. and then let them go play. But I think sometimes people let dogs play too hard, and we've been talking about that a lot here in the last mm-hmm. month at the playground. Mm-hmm. And for us, you know, we're here to fix dogs, not create problems. Mm-hmm. And if you let dogs play too rough, you can let dogs play. Like, you could let Dolby and... Uh, Bodie play really rough if you choose to. They they could be okay, but the bad part about it is, whenever Dobie goes somewhere else and rough house some other dog, and they're a dog fight. Mm-hmm. That dog like, no, dude, you ain't pouncing on me. So is it necessary or not? I don't know. I mean, it's always a double edged sword. So I think people really need to take that into consideration. And me walking down the street, I don't let my dog meet every dog on the street. I don't see it's necessary. I don't meet every person on the street. I'll say hi and wave, you know. And I was bad about when I moved to Oregon, when I got with Jody, actually. She's, I'd be driving down the road waving. She's like, you know them? I'm like, no, not, no one wave at them. Because back home in the country, hell, everybody waved everybody. And nowadays, they'll almost shoot you if you wave at them. They're like, man, that ain't very nice. They waved to me. So it's kind of the opposite of what we expect. So, Brett, you any questions? Got a couple. Uh, TV Kelly asks, what's the name of your book? Uh, I have two. Uh, Marvin and his cow dogs is one, the first book I wrote. And it's all short stories about, I would ask people here, but I don't think nobody's read it. But it's short stories about catching cows and working dogs and getting bucked off horses and running into houses and 
over Carvettes. Just a bunch of short stories. And then the other one's Marvin Rides Again. So there's two of them out there. And you can order them through us. I think the only place you can really get them right now is either email us and we'll send them or you can go to uh, piercescowdogs.com. And I think you can just order them on there and Irene will ship them to you. <clears throat> so you got another question you say? Yeah, well, one comment. Rodney Corbin says, I live 130 miles north from you, but I can drive down to get a piece of that cake. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we haven't even cracked it open yet. I keep waiting for somebody to start carving on it. Jocelyn's head over there. I figured she'd already be eating a piece of it. But it's closest to you. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to start on it. It's like, I don't want to be like. I'll be turning the mic off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll make one of those TikTok eating videos. <laughs> and we made a TikTok. TikTok video. We don't know what it's like yet because uh, Bianca hasn't proof watched there. Listen to it, but it was me and a you. Podcast. A podcast. Yeah. yeah, it was me and yeah. you and Quinn, Quinn and, and Gavin, her husband, boyfriend. Yeah, we were all sitting there eating lunch, and I said, "Hey, let's do a podcast real quick." So she just threw her phone out on the table and turned it on. And we it might all, be a lot of bowl clanking. Yeah, because we just hadn't hurry because we had dog lesson at any time, and we were hungry. So and Jody <laughs> made some meat cakes to her soup. So it was chowed down on it. So it was really good, too. It Nobody good. complained. Yep. Even Jocelyn, or Quinn, had two bowls or so. Yep. So Again, we only name tags. Yeah, yeah that's all right. It's all the same. <laughs> so, Brett, how many people got on here? Uh, you've got about 15 people on So here. I'm going to read this. What's wrong with your dog? And you know, you can just, people can just make it simple. It's a turd. And we'll understand. <laughs> Only thing you gotta add is it bites people. That helps. Mm -hmm. Or it dog fights. Mm -hmm. Whether it counts, surfs, couch surfs, pulls on a leash, whatever. Brett, I'm gonna read this for you. Okay. This is for Brett. This is some of the stuff we put up with Brett. <clears throat> uh, what's your dog's name? Sam. <clears throat> no thing I'm talking about, Sam. This is just a made up thing. How old is your dog? He's between a year and five years old. What breed is your dog? A lab. How big is your dog? He's large, between 50 and 100 pounds. What's your dog's gender? He's a male that's been neutered. And here's the best part. Please describe the problem or problems you're having with your dog. Sam is a two and a half year old lab. He is a lot to handle at times, especially when it comes to me. He loves me the most, but also will not listen to anything I ask of him. Same goes for our kids. They never listen to me either. The only person he listens to is my husband, Joe Bob. When Joe Bob is home, he is fine. As soon as Joe Bob leaves, Sam jumps up on the couch, will paw at me for attention. No matter how much I love, how much love I give him, as soon as I stop, he will bark at me right in my face, and he nips at me. He will grab things off my coffee table and chew on them while he's staring at me. The only command he will listen to is sit, but only if I have a treat, and only if it's the type of treat he likes. I love him to death, but he has caused a lot of stress over the last couple months. He is supposed to be my emotional support dog, but as it turned out, he is the problem. So he does struggle with anxiety. He will get really worked up if I take him places and will pant nonstop. He is kennel trained and loves to go in his area when he wants. I will put him in there when he starts barking, nipping to get my attention. <laughs> and he will just stare at me and bark and bark and bark and continuously. I sent him to a dog trainer November. He was supposed to stay for 14 days, but they kicked him out and sent him home the first week due to the fact that he just will not listen. They said he's not trainable if he was like this. Do you think you could help us? We really enjoy him. He is a sweet boy. We just need some help. And that's the kind of stuff that we get. And I only added a couple words in this. Most of it was actually sent to me. But I feel that people like this, they really do have a problem with the dog. Mm -hmm. And for me to defend people like this, is like I said, we get a lot of these letters, I mean, all the time, and we always read them and we take them seriously. And we pick them apart, and for me, it always comes back to the same thing. The dog was never taught as a puppy to be a dog, a puppy. People, they get these puppies for whatever reason, and there's a lot of reasons. I bought a pup one time because I just wanted that pup. 
And he was cool. I trained him, and the first dog I ever trained him, and I sold it. Well, I didn't even sell him, actually. I flew him to Texas and gave him away. So he, uh, a friend of mine down there really wanted him, so I flew him down there and gave him to him. And the thing is, for me, is when I bought that pup, he was eight weeks old, and I trained him to a T. And I've told it on here several times. I played darts at that time. I worked a lot of hours. And I trained on my puppy. That's all I done. I was single and I was dedicated to that puppy. And I only used one book to train him. And out here a while back, a guy tried to throw me under the bus in front of some people because we were talking about dog training and some mistakes people made. And the guy said, well, <clears throat> tell us about your first dog. I bet he wasn't perfect. And I said, you know, actually he was. He's like, really? I said, yep, yeah, well, I bought me a book and I trained my puppy. And I said, I could set him anywhere and I could, and he would set, as long as he could hear my whistle, he would set and look at me. I could send him any direction with hand signals. I could stop him any time with a whistle. He's like, really? I said, yep. I said, I taught him to jump over a bench, crawl under a bench, or sit on a bench by words. I said, you name it, I taught that dog. And I said, I could hunt with him too, and he would retrieve for me. Really? I said, yes. But I was dedicated to training that pup. And just like you, I, you got a book to train your puppy. Mm -hmm. Have you followed it to a T? Mm -hmm. And how's your pup? Really good, I and, think. And I agree. Yeah. I mean, and he's not as good as the one I trained for the same age, but mm -hmm. the only reason is because the thing, the key to me is for people to understand. At that time, all I have was my job, my pup, and my darts. Mm -hmm. You... You have a husband. I don't know if we're supposed to tell everybody, but you do. <laughs> <laughs> He's you have, yeah, you have other dogs. Yeah. And you work with dogs every day. Yeah. But you look at how cool your puppy is. Mm -hmm. And if you wouldn't have put that dedication into it, it wouldn't be that cool or mm -hmm. she wouldn't be. And she's going to be, to me, a great dog, especially I feel that now because you actually leave her at the kennel. So I'm instead of taking her home, letting her sleep on the bed every night. She's never been in my room. <laughs> no, but it is fun. It's fun to see how much time and effort you put into making a great dog. Mm -hmm. And it'll show. And I feel like something that's really cool is that, I don't know, I guess maybe the time that I've put in is like two minutes here yes. and there. It's not. I've never spent <clears throat> an hour training on her. In and day. that's the fun thing, and that's what we always try to tell people. You know, and I've always told people, I'll train a dog in minutes compared to hours. But sometimes those minutes come up at an inconvenient time. Yeah, like it's 2 o'clock like, in the morning. i fix it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it is true, but the thing is for me is it always can go so quickly uh, either way in training. Mm -hmm. You can ignore a problem like you just said, you can't. Yeah. Because if you ignore a problem, then it becomes a problem. Yeah. But if you just jump on it and try to address it right away. And for me... You know, I don't want anyone to think that we take lightly to a dog problem. It doesn't matter what the problem right. is. We take it 100% serious. And we always want to help those people. Yes, and the dog. Yeah. You know, the dogs are easy. People's the hard part uh, to teach. And it's just because of the fact that I think some people are really in denial, you know, that they have a problem. And like recently we had someone came here with a really, really bad problem and all they could say was the greatest things about their dog. Mm -hmm. And that, and it went on. Bianca was there for like five minutes, ten mm -hmm. minutes, mm -hmm. how great their dog was. I'm like, why are you here? Mm -hmm. I thought you came for a dog lesson. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did. And I'm like, well, your dog sounds perfect. And then all the rest of the stuff comes out. So for me, you know, it, it's, sometimes, it's not hard for me. If my dog's a turd eater, I'll tell you it's a turd eater. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I don't have to hide what's wrong with my dogs. <laughs> but people want to, I don't know, it's like they want to protect their baby when they get here. Yeah. And I feel like everyone kind of has different reasons. Like, sometimes it's like they're, you're poking their pride. It is. To say that their dog has some problems. Or they, they feel like they failed it. Right. Or they feel uh, all sorts of things. Or they feel, I think, that, and I told people today, I mean, I'm not picking on no one. You're here with a legit dog problem. Let's yeah. try to fix it. Yeah. Because you might own 10 or 100 more dogs. Yeah. You know, let's, yeah. if we could fix this dog and teach you how to prevent it, the next puppy you get, so much the better. Yeah. You know? And so I think that's one of the hardest things for people to understand sometimes is 
to me, a lot of their dog problems ain't even worth talking about. I mean, I fix that for breakfast. But at the same time, I feel bad because some people go, and we get people here that don't like me, and they don't come back. You know, and some of them, it's a mutual agreement. I don't like them either. But, you know, there's only been like one or two of those in 20 years. Truthfully, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like yeah. everybody. But if yeah. I don't like you, when you come here for a lesson, and I tell you I don't like you, you can damn well go to the bank and borrow money on I don't like you. <laughs> you probably won't get a Christmas card from me or nothing. Our ties are cut. Wait a minute, I didn't get a Christmas card last night. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gary. But... <clears throat> It is that hard for people to understand that you sometimes we go to trainers or people send their dogs to trainers or they go to trainers and you know and one of the big things that we hear a lot is well they never trained me like maybe you weren't a the right trainer you know and for me that's all my goal you come here with a problem dog and you don't want to work with me then there ain't no need to leave your dog here you might as well take it on down the road. Joe Bob will take it. He don't even care. You can mail him the money and he'll be happy. But for me, I want to work with the people because I want the dog to have a good owner too. So any question, Brett? You got a story from <clears throat> from Carrie Simmons? Lurch. With Lurch. Lurch. The Great Dane. Uh, Lurch and another dog were playing, and then the other dog, she had asked the other owner to stop because that dog was mouthing on Lurch didn't stop the owner just disregarded it eventually it came back she growled at that dog and that dog stopped immediately stopped what it was doing so she was just telling that story because what you had taught her had come in hand with another dog that was trying to mouth on her dog that she didn't know and it's tough you know that's one of the big things that people talk to me about a lot is what do i do if somebody's dog comes to my dog and tries to hurt my dog I'm not a very good person, I mean, to say what I do. Me either. Yeah, because it's just, you know, it's a tough world we live in anyway. Yeah. But I've never been good. And I go back to, <clears throat> for me, being crazy in a no-crazy zone, 20 years, 23 years ago, whatever, I had a dog named Jake. He was a border collie. And, I mean, that dog would die for me. I mean, he was my buddy. And we were team roping, and... At that time, all I had was some roped out roping steers, big old laundry ass steers with big horns on them and stuff. And we were in my roping arena working. I was roping, playing, whatever the hell I was doing. And I was up there by myself, which ain't the best thing to do anyway. But me and Bear, we were doing whatever we were doing with cattle. And I sent this dog into the, what they call a stripping chute. It's a pen that's like, I don't know, 14 feet long and 8, 10 foot wide, whatever. This steer went in there. Well, then it got all pissy and it wouldn't come out, so I sent Barry in there and run it out. Well, then it got my dog in the corner. Well, I ain't going to let him kill my dog, so I go in there with him. And by the time this settled, dust has settled, the steer's gone. I'm laying there and my T-shirt's tore off. Me and my dog is there together, and the steer's gone. But, you know, that dog, I mean, he would die for me because I was in there for him because that steer was going to kill him. And it was like, holy shit, my T-shirt was too rough. <laughs> shit was a cloud of dust. And when it was all said and done, me and my dog won. But we won together. And so that's for me, is how important it is. And I'd be the same way with Barry, Roxy, Mar, mm -hmm. you know, any dog, really. Mm -hmm. But that dog, he was my buddy. I mean, he was the only dog I had, and I trained him to be a cow dog, and I wasn't going to let him get hurt like that. Mm -hmm. So for me, whenever you're out walking your dogs, you know, <clears throat> I, and I totally understand the leash laws, because of people, we get people, well, no, my dog don't never bite me unless. Mm -hmm. There can't be an unless. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with people, you know, we spend 20 minutes getting somebody to tell me how their dog comes to them every time they call them. Mm -hmm. And then accept. Yeah. And here recently, me and you were in a lesson. Yep. My dog always comes to me every time I call him. I said, every time? Well, yeah, unless. A leaf blows by or a beer can or somebody drops a ball, then he won't come to me. Well, he will eventually. So it's no. When he feels like it. Yeah, it's no for me. And yeah. that's the bad thing about whenever you take a turd to a park or out in the field and let him loose and you're playing ball with him and you know he has a little bit of a problem with a, a Rottweiler or a Great Dane or a Poodle or whatever the hell. Dogs are weird. They'll pick a certain dog they don't like, a certain color or breed. And they're like, yeah, if we're playing ball, we're good, unless that dog comes by 
and then I can't calm the dog off. Mm -hmm. And it happens all the time. And that's that's the reason that, like she said, was lurch, is they get in trouble because the other yeah. people, they had two things. One is they're too stupid to call their own dog back. They don't understand what they're getting into. Mm -hmm. Or they can't call their dog back. Yeah, I and think then, most of the time people don't see that as a problem. They don't, but it's just like me. If somebody comes bitch slap me upside the head, I'm going to take offense to it. I know. <clears throat> and it's the same thing with dogs. If one dog goes chewing on another dog and that other dog's a cool dog, he's like, no, we're not going to play like that. Yeah. Then you're going to have troubles. And for me, it's just sad that people do it. And that's mm -hmm. why the leash law is as bad as they are, you know, because mm -hmm. you can get in a lot of trouble. I, I was told at one time I'm kind of exempt with the leash laws with my cow dogs because I've been in downtown Newburgh catching cattle with my dogs before and all kinds of stuff, so my dog's kind of... But, you know, all the cops at the, at the time kind of knew me too because they had called me to go get cattle when they got out on the highways and stuff, so it's fun to see the <clears throat> dogs like Lurch is so well-mannered. Mm -hmm. They would have had a bad dog fight. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, you get two yeah. of them dogs in a fight, yeah. it's worse than real. And good for Carrie for advocating yeah. for her dog. <clears throat> yeah. And it is. Any, for me, any time I feel that if you ask somebody to leash their dog, they ought to leash their damn dog because mm -hmm. they ain't supposed to be off leash anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I don't know where the exceptions for that is. I, I'm sure there's off-leash parks, but I don't think your dog should be a turd in an off-leash park. Yeah. Like us with our set dogs free, somebody's talking today about how excited they are to be able to come do it with their dog. They didn't know we could do it. And then they didn't know the rules we have. Our rules is our dogs, the dogs that go up here with us have to be through our training program of some kind, mm -hmm. either whether it's single private lessons or our boarding trainer or whatever, but... <clears throat> and then there's no bones about it if your dog's not being have. Mm -hmm. People ask to put them on. Normally, we don't have to ask nobody. If their dog's being turned, they'll put them on a leash yourself. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we'll yep. work with them, you know, because their yep. dog's already been here. We'll help them with their dog. Yep. But it's not great. We've never had nobody. We've, I don't even think we've had anybody we've had to tell to leash their dogs. No. That if somebody's mm -hmm. dog's in there, don't happen very often, but they'll do it yourself. Brett, get a question? No more questions, Brett. All right, Carrie, you got any subjects tonight before we... Bail off here. I'm focused on that cake. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a question. <laughs> I'm well, that you cake. Really that cake <laughs> yeah. So you got anything? Um, no, I think you covered most of my stuff. I mean, especially last week when you know talking about the separation and going back to work with COVID and all of that good stuff. So. You know, the hard thing is for me with people with their dogs is, and I told someone I think here recently. You know, if you can't live with just staring at without staring at your dog, you know, get a picture of him and put it on the wall. Just stare at the picture for a while. Give your dog a break. <laughs> it's just a bad habit. It's just a bad habit. I mean, Bianca, you got anything to add? Nope. You normally have a list. I know. I don't have a list today. You know, whining dogs is one of the things that we talk about all the time. I mean, we got a whiner in the kennel right now or two. And holy shit, they just, um, and one of them will go in the back of the kennel while the other one's out in the front, and the one in the back will, oh, so the one in the front gets in trouble. And it's like, damn, you like two little kids? I'm talking about Doby. <laughs> no. Not today? No, Doby, I didn't hear him. Doby's quiet today, yeah. yeah. But we have them, and then we get dogs that bark and don't quit bark. I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's been one of those days. I went in the kennel this morning, it's like, man, it's so freaking quiet in here, you can hear a pin drop. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. It went to hell in the handbasket quick. I mean, so you it, said that. And you were thinking that. Yeah, I guess. There are so many people, though, that don't see how the learned behaviors in dogs. Like, they just really think they have a dog that barks and whines. They don't see that they created a dog that barks right. and whines. And Tilly's not perfect. She needs some work. But yeah, she's pretty quiet for a puppy. She is. She yeah. does really good. But I could see in the beginning where... My response to her a little bit of whining and her barking immediately, I'm like, oh, I got to be on this right now, otherwise she will continue it. And I can see where it happens right when you bring them home. <laughs> you hollered about that to me just the other day. <laughs> Doby was whining, and I was like, Doby, knock it off. And Barb was like, did he understand yet? And I'm like, oh, point taken. And in dog language, Doby's like, Carrie, talk to me. Oh, yeah. Like, Carrie's like, like, okay. I didn't even, it didn't even dawn on me in the moment how I was like, Doby, just stop it. You know? And 
Marvin's like, that didn't work. Marvin usually says that the dog says, hey, speak. And we're like, yaddy, 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 yaddy. <laughs> and that's the other day we had the people in here with the, those two dogs. I hadn't seen them for a while, but they come in for a couple lessons. And they're standing there, one on each side of the one dog. And the dog oh, yeah, I've never his, seen anything like that. And they both started petting him at the same time? It was like a, a, you hit a button and Amazing. both hands petted the dog. As soon as it started <laughs> barking, one was on each yeah. side. They both started petting at the same time. Yeah. I'm like, really? And the dog shut up. They're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, damn, your dog asked you to pet him, and both of you do it. That's impressive. The dog has you trained well. She said that. She yeah. said, so the dog has us trained really well. Sure does. Yeah, well, not arguing around here. <laughs> we, we agree with you. But it is fun to see the people's. And I told Bianca today that, we, you know, we need to video more of our lessons because of the fact that just see the people's responses. I had a young couple in there one time. They were arguing with me, the husband and wife over. They don't do this with their dog when they walk it. I'm like, sure you do. No, we don't. And I said, hey, you know what? I got a video on my camera. So I videoed both of them. Then I said, now I want Mammy video me. And she videoed me. And then we watched the video. And the husband's like, man, I did do that, didn't I? I don't know. <laughs> Videos don't lie. I don't know how to do no chopping and cutting on this shit. And I'm like, here, man, let's watch yours too. And she's like, Really? I said, now let's watch mine. They're like, huh. I said, yeah. I said, when y'all go home, you should like video one another once in a while. You, they ain't going to lie. You'll know what you did. And it, sometimes it's that simple. When you video things, I don't want to video a lot of things I do because I'll be like, duh, why'd I do that? Uh, yeah, I video a lot <laughs> of my stuff sometimes if I'm here working a dog in the evening. And I look back and I'm like, crap. I thought I did really good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not hard to make mistakes. And. You know, there's not, I don't know, many people that work dogs more hours a week than I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I goof off a lot, but if you took the amount of time I actually spend in the calendar, it's pretty amazing, I think. Or working with dogs, not in the kennels, out in the field or whatever. But for me, that's one of our big things on the playground, even. I work with dogs out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I sit on the bench some. It depends on how my knees are feeling, but then I'll call dogs to me on the bench, too, mm -hmm. and work with them, so... I think or make it, them sit with us. Yes, and I think that's a hard, <clears throat> hard thing for people. They don't take advantage of the time they could be training yeah. on their dogs. Yeah. I train on bear all the time when I'm sitting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he went there and kissed that girl today. She's like, really? I'm like, I did nothing to do that shit. <laughs> That's all the girls work here. Pretty soon Marvin's going to be like, that's not my dog. <laughs> <laughs> the other day we were out there and Barry went up to Marvin and did the paw thing. And Marvin goes, go have the girls love you. And Bear just turns around and there was three of us. And he's like, which one's going to love you? Yeah. What's like, funny is you can almost bring Bear out with a new customer. And see the weaknesses. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. no. Bear will evaluate, evaluate and be like, yeah, that one. <laughs> and he'll walk over and go like this, and the people will be talking to us and petting Bear, and he's like, see, I told you. <laughs> he went over to that girl and jumped He went that girl day and jumped right up on the bench fire, and he got his head up high enough when she turned around and kissed her own <laughs> He probably loves She's it. She's like, really? I'm like, well, he goes to the weakest link. <laughs> but it is funny because he Robert was, probably felt better that it didn't you know, come We can him. make a uh, TikTok world out of that dog. Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, he'll stand there with me the other day. I was telling him, I said, don't start your shit. And he's like... <laughs> And then he looks right back at me like two seconds later. I'm like, Bear? And he's like, and then he's like, mm. I'm like, leave. And he's like, okay. <laughs> so, but yeah, he's just checking to make sure I didn't weaken like y'all do. That's the only thing that'll make him quit with me is if I give him a command to go away. <laughs> <laughs> I think we give him a command to go away, and he just turns away and then he comes right back the other direction. You know, it's between me and Mariah. Like, he'll pop over. To Ryan and over to me. So bad. Yeah, he's pretty spoiled. I'm just hoping Mari and Roxy don't learn that shit so bad. <laughs> Aren't we past that with them two? Too? Mari's pretty bad. Roxy, I mean, neither of them do this, but Mari's like. <laughs> and Roxy will come up to your legs and like, yeah, so so rub on you like, hey, I'm down here. I can't jump on you, but I'm down here. Roxy she kind of walks like stuff. a mermaid. She's she so stealing slow. stuff. Yeah, she did. She ain't stole no coffee. Maybe there hasn't home. been anything for her to steal, though. Awesome. Bear drinks my coffee. If I put it up on the box, he's like... 
Rock took my phone out of my pocket the other day. She what? <laughs> took my phone out oh, of my pocket. She's not done. <laughs> oh, she ain't done. I'm like, really? Who she's a thief. No we got to do a TikTok video of her, though. I oh, know. That'd be fun. Or or she, you, you got a big question from a, a viewer. He right. said, will there be a, a nec- or live next week with Thanksgiving on Thursday? I don't know why not. Probably. Yeah, yep. I'm not sure. <laughs> if we got Bianca, we're good. The other two, they fly by night. You never know what <laughs> well, what's Jody cooking for dinner? Yeah. That's the question. Can we get free turkey? Yeah. yeah. Because maybe Kay will make us a cake since Nancy made <laughs> us. Or uh, Linda. Suzanne might. Yeah, she might. I was going to call her come over and not her and Jason, but I should have. Jason would like that chicken. Yeah, and the cake. Yeah, yeah and the cake. <laughs> so they ain't going to watch. It's got chocolate, so that's the same as those uh, saltwater taco peanut butter thing. Maybe she eats some of that. So, Brett, got any questions? Yeah, Emma just jumped on here and said, we're grateful for you guys. Thank you for board and training with Alexia. Oh, awesome. Oh, fun. Yeah, that dog did good. They did yeah. good. That dog's made a huge change. She has, and just the last few yeah. days, too. Yeah, that's one of those dogs that yeah. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You just beat your head against the wall, yeah. and one day they wake up like, cool, yeah. I'm ready now. Yeah. And for me, like I said, it always it's just a matter of building that foundation, yeah. and then yeah. one day they just spring into action, and they start doing it. Yeah. So, uh, has Robert then been on here tonight? Uh, I haven't seen Robert yet. They say he will be here at 6 or o'clock. Emily. Emily. They're the ones we that know. A lot of people interact, so. They're the ones that own Kimberly. Kimber? Kimber? Kimber. Kimber. Yeah. And she's one of the screaming, crying, and whining <laughs> dogs. <laughs> I wasn't going to pick on her tonight, but it just happened to come up. And she's like just hurting that burger dog, Minjaw. <laughs> yeah, they take turns. <laughs> per yeah. se. Per se. They Maybe by the end of the three weeks. His mom said it. we could shave his neck a little bit. Oh, good. Yeah, but they are, I mean, for me, all the dogs are fun. They just all try you in different ways. It's just like depending on what day it is. So, Jocelyn? <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's like, I know for you, when somebody calls and you say hello, there's got to be a word you hate to hear. Um, I feel like everyone's different, honestly. When do you go, oh, no? Um, when I say, I had the perfect dog. For me, that's when I do. It's much. so yeah. hard to say. A lot of the time when people say that their dog is biting or jumping really bad, and then they go, oh, and I do have two kids. I get worried there immediately <laughs> because I'm like, your dog so is do biting. I. And yeah. you have yeah. younger kids, yeah. especially. Yeah. Yeah, that's always what yeah. I'm, you know, me, I have so such a short fuse for that, as Bianca's seen. I'll put up and put up and put up and listen to dog problems. And, but then when they say they have a little kid or an old person like me or older, and it's, it's not fair. I tell people all the time, it's like, you know, you're two adults. If you get bit by your dog, it's your own damn fault. But if your little kid gets bit by him, it's going to traumatize him for life, and it's still your damn fault. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if your mom or grandma or grandpa or somebody gets trampled and knocked down in the house and bit, you know. Yeah. And we hear so many different things about dogs. I mean, I remember a dog that came here a few years back, and they were going to get it out of the truck. And I said, no, let's just talk. And I said, what's the problem with your dog? Which I already knew. Because I do read the protocol or whatever you call that thing sometimes. And this dog, I'd actually read it because somebody had told me the dog had bit someone. And this dog bites. They're like 80-some-year-old mom who they live at their mom's house, you know, to help her, and which is really cool. But their mom can't come out of the bedroom without okaying it with the, their kids to make sure that the dog's put up because the dog will bite them. And it's like, oh, I about lost it. I'm like, why would you let your parents live in a house like this? And it was a pit bull right wall across or some badass dog, a rescue dog, too. And I'm like, why would you allow that? Well, we really love our dog. I said, so you don't love your parents? Uh-huh. And I'm telling you, I got, like I said, a short fuse when it comes to that. So they're like, well, do you want to wear? I said, no, I don't want to work with your dog. I said, whose parent are you going to use for a demo to try your dog out? 
And so I'm not sure what they done with the dog, but I didn't even charge her for the lesson. I don't know, I ain't going to charge us. And I don't want to deal with them. And it's sad, but people do it, and kids too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we get people here that their dog bites their kid, and, mm -hmm. or their neighbor's kid, or their friend's kid, mm -hmm. and then they're like, well, can you fix it? I'm like, whose little kid are you going to use to test him? Mm -hmm. You're not using my grandkids. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it is that bad, and that's where I go for the fact that dogs are dogs and humans are humans. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that you got to put these dogs down at all, but you need to find them a ride home. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And yeah. to me, the ride home is not the home the little kids are in. Yeah. Or the old people that can't defend themselves. Because, I mean, it's just bad. So, Brett, you got anything? Robert is present. <laughs> oh, man, now we're talking about his dog. I didn't know he was here. Here with you guys. That's what he said. Hey, your dog was curled up snoring a while ago. Right? Yeah, she finally. freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> only 12 hour day for her. <laughs> no, actually, she's only like nine and a half. I don't think, I think that's the first nap she took. No, she took a nap on the way home in the car. Yeah. That's kind of like the kids. <laughs> they take a nap on the way home when they get home and ready to go. <laughs> but no, yeah. I am, I'm tickled with how well she's doing. She she's really coming really around. She's really good, yeah. And so are they. Robert and his daughter, it's fun to see the difference. In, and when people realize what they've done, and then sometimes people realize there is a cure. Mm-hmm. They're like, really? We're going to fix it? Yeah. We don't have to live yeah. like this for the next yeah. 15 years? Yeah. So it is fun to see the, the change in the people whenever they see their dogs trying to be good. Yeah. So you got anything? Yep. You got Mary. She said, thank you all. Bronk has been doing great. We look forward to catching up. Awesome. Yeah, we're hoping you're going to show up today, Mary. But I know. It's too nice a day. You probably had to stay home. Rick, please, or ride horses. <laughs> and then TB Kelly says, do you offer classes for older dogs? We've been there with Bella when she was a pup. She's almost three years and could use some tuning up. Absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully she ain't went south from the time she's a puppy till she's three years old. <laughs> I, uh, that's the thing is for me with some dogs like Kimber. Came here, what, six months, four months old? Yep. Then she disappeared in MIA for six months. Yep. And then now she's like, woke up one morning being honorary. So for me, it's like, I guess for people, it's like, okay, when do I get help? Mm-hmm. Do I wait till my dog's eating the furniture and biting the neighbors and killing my cat? <laughs> then, hey, maybe I ought to get some help. <laughs> or is it when your dog starts jumping on you? I think some people try so hard thinking they're going to fix it themselves. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what you try makes it a lot worse. <laughs> it does. I see people do that with their cars, you know. They're like, shit, I'm going to save that $15. <laughs> I'm going to fix it myself. <laughs> $5,000 later. They're like, man, I might be able to get it this time. So, do you watch Street Outlaws? I do. Did you watch the last episode or two? Uh, no. I'm probably behind a little bit. It's kind of funny. on my DVR and I, It's know. fun to see some of the people on there, too, you know. But they're into a race and they're like, shit, do I take a chance and blow up this $20,000 <laughs> engine? <laughs> And win that five thousand dollars, or do I just wait till next week? And some of them will go do it. Yep. And I'm that way with cows too. Well, I guess with my dogs, I can't talk much. But I remember one time I was—I don't know if you ever watched John Wayne movies, but what True Grit, where he got the reins in his mouth. I was being so freaking stupid one day catching some cows, and I had <laughs> rope, dogs, a horse, and a dart gun. And I'm like a rifle, <clears throat> tranquilizer gun. And I finally it see this. Like a bad car, it's a it? bad, it's bad, it's bad. I see this cow and she takes off for the high country. And I'm like, shit, man! I kicked my horse and away we went. And I'm like pumping my dart gun, <laughs> and my horse runs hard as he can. And I'm like draw it up, and she just starts to jump fence. I'm like, bam, because I knew if I darted her, she wouldn't go hopefully very far. And so I shot her with a dart gun, and she jumped the fence, and she got hung in the fence. And I'm like, shit, it's my chance. I threw my dart gun on the ground, grabbed my rope off, and went to the rope, and she got out and got, I'm like, shit, I missed my chance. But I'd done so much, but yet I was mad because I didn't do one more thing. And luckily my horse stopped at the fence because I had one rain one hand, but I was like, I done darted this cow, and I done threw the dart gun down and got the rope. But that's kind of what happens with people with dogs. It's like, where do you stop and get help? And for me, if you get help, and it doesn't matter if it's here or where it is, 
Like I said, we're not for everybody. But when you go to get help, just because it didn't work doesn't mean it can't be fixed. It may just not be able to be fixed there. You right. might have to move on to something. Or it else. takes more to fix it. Like, it's not well, just one lesson. And but then... well, and that's the thing is here, though, we do our meet and greet consultation. Right. And we try to set up a program that will work for people. And some people come back, and some people are still coming back like yourself mm-hmm. a year later or whatever. And you, well, both of you actually work. All three of you still you work here now. Yeah. And all of you came here with dog stuff. So I think that for me, it goes back to water bottles and pop cans are 10 cents a piece now. So just get on Facebook. Everybody does all the time. Say, hey, I need some bottles and cans. I got to go take my dog to a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> drink one less mocha or whatever you call that thing. <laughs> that $8 dollar drink. <laughs> I get like 10 cent cup of coffee in my little coffee maker, so I'm good to go. But if you don't go get those drinks every day for a week or two, you can go do a lesson. Right. And then you can set up a program and say, hey, this is what I got. This is what I can do. And for me, you know, <clears throat> I still feel that it goes back to dedication. When I trained my cow dogs, I didn't have nobody to help me. Brad Bringman in Newburgh, he helped me for a little while with Jake because I bought Jake from Brad. And then it was me and me, and I bought video after video after video. And I've got, I still have videos. I mean, anybody needs cow dog videos, I've got one or 20 or 50 of them around. And same way with obedience training videos and problem dog videos. I've got piles of videos, you know, and bless you. Thank you. And, and I watched them, not like some people bitch about the quality of the, the video itself. It's like, damn, I'm not talking about Bianca, of course, but... <clears throat> of course. <laughs> yes. For me, one video I watched years ago, it was like a five-hour training video on VHS. It was so long ago. And the guy said, if you're looking for the quality, high-dollar production, you're in the wrong place. But if you want to learn how to train a cow dog, you are in the right place. And I took it. I mean, there was wind noise. I mean, there was just running through the brush with a horse trying to video I mean you name it it was on there and I learned a lot you know but it goes back to the same whether you're watching the video or going to a trainer if you're watching the video that ain't working for you then you need to just watch another video don't bar the video this man of mine never gonna watch no more training videos if you do it's your own damn fault you know and training dogs I don't know it ain't easy I mean everybody would do it but I think that the hardest thing about people training a dog is, is they're trying to train their little kid instead of their little dog. I mean, I've had people here before in a lesson with their little kids. It's like, damn, I see why your dog's bad. Mm-hmm. That little dust kicker you got running around on two feet don't mind either. <laughs> <laughs> Take that boy out behind the woodshed for a while, like Dad did me, and you'd be having a better dog. <laughs> Note to self: Do not let Barbara babysit children. <laughs> hey, you'd be surprised how good they turn out. You know, ranch manager. He's we all love him. Hey, that's a cool kid. He came over the other day and said, "Some money for the needy, Papa." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but it is. I mean, it's true. You know, me doing big dog demo stuff once in a while in California, Washington, Oregon, wherever, people be like, can you train my kid like that dog? I'm like, yeah, damn right. But I'm going to start with you. You got a problem. <clears throat> There's not problems with kids. There's problems with parents. Yeah. And dogs are the same way. I mean, yeah. dogs aren't born normally bad. They're just spoiled, shitless, and then you got a problem. And then people don't want to hurt the feelings. Yeah. It's like, okay, if I make Fluffy mine... Fluffy's going to be mad. And if Fluffy's mad, Fluffy ain't going to want to sell my lap, and then I'm not going to have nobody to live on. It's like, the hell you don't. Go to Walmart. <laughs> Get one off shelf. So I think that people just use a lot of excuses not to make your dog mine. That's what we need to get. We need to get little Marvin Pierce stuffed animal <laughs> yeah. dogs, and when they love too much on their dog, we can give them a stuffed animal. You know how many dogs we go through? Yeah. I better start ordering. Yeah. Oh, shit. Get the dump truck. Brett, you got any questions? Nope. All right. We got anybody on here. We're going to bail off here at 708. We got cake to eat. Y'all got dogs to let out? Yeah. 
So thanks, everybody. And go to Martin Pierce Dog Teacher YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and check us out. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast. If you found this information helpful, we suggest following even more of our dog training tips and resources on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. 